while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. So next question, uh, what does respect the persons mean? What does respect the persons mean? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 15. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the persons of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So, Rick, this is, this is referring to respect the person. Because if the respect the person is because somebody is, they, they, because of their social status, they rich, they poor, you show them favor. They do something wrong, they break the law, you show, oh, you know what, that's my, that's my, that's my best friend. You know what, oh, he, he got a high status, so I'm not going to judge the situation. I'm going to show him some mercy because of his status. I'm going to show her some mercy because of her status. Whether it's your rich, somebody that's rich or poor, a close friend, associate, somebody you tight with, you got to correct them. If they wrong, you got to correct them. If they break the laws, you have to correct them. If they doing good, you exhort them. It, it, it's, it's no, you, you do it because they have a certain status or they can put you in a certain position or they give you gifts. You judge them with righteous judgment. If they break the laws, you correct them on the laws. If they doing good, you exhort them accordingly. There's no respect of person. You don't do something to you don't do something, do something or not do something to them based on your relationship with them, how they stand, whether they they a high rank. No, you judge with righteous judgment. Um, from there, go to Sirach chapter four and twenty two. Rock chapter 4 and verse 22. Ecclesiastical chapter 4 and verse 22. Accept no person against thy soul. So it says, accept no person against your soul. Don't break the commandments because you have favors towards somebody. You, your, your best friend, you got a best friend. Don't break the commandment. Don't, com don't compromise God's laws because your relationship with somebody. Or because somebody has a, a high status or a high rank so you're scared to say something to them. Don't break the commandments because of because you, you favoritism, any of that. Read. And let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. You don't fear no man above the Most High God and His laws. It's the the fear of the Lord that give us understanding, not the fear of men. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing that uh, that any man can give us or take from us. If they take something from us, it's ordained by the Most High. If they give us something, it's ordained by the Most High. So we can't let the fear of man, that's, that's having to respect the person. Because you buddy-buddy with somebody, you don't correct them when they're wrong, when they're breaking God's laws. That's a respect the person's spirit. You're ashamed to say something to them because you're scared it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to mess up your relationship. Or it's going to mess them up. They ain't going to give you no gift because you say something, you correct them. No, nah, that's a respect the person's spirit. Uh, was that it on that? Uh, from there, go to James chapter 2 and verse 1. James chapter 2 and verse 1. Leviticus 19 and 15 is the law. James chapter 2 and verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. So it says we're not supposed to fear, the, fear Christ. And the Most High God would respect the person, meaning we 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 have our we have our friendship high on on a higher pedestal than the laws than the Most High God. That means you don't fear God. Read verse two. For if there come unto your assembly a man with gold with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, meaning this person that is talking about if it has goodly apparel referring to somebody that got a high status. They got they 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 got it they got it going on so to say. They riding good, they money good. They got a high status, they had a high political status. Whatever the case may be, they got influence. But then you have somebody that's poor and vile raiment meaning he don't don't nobody listen to him. He he don't he don't have a a, a position of authority so to say. Read verse 3. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, 
or sit here under my footstool. So real quick, because it says, and you have respect to him that wear the gay clothing. This ain't modern English. We, don't, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't use that term in this way today. Pull up that definition for gay. It's the Edom, Edom, Edom online etymology dictionary. Uh, read the second, the second paragraph. Throw that up for your brother. There you go. I'll put it. Second paragraph. Meaning stately and beautiful, splendid, showily dressed. Of things sumptuous, showy, rich, ordinary, shining, glittering, gleaming, bright, vivid. Of persons dressed up, decked out in finery. So we see this. So the gay clothing is pretty, is referring back to what was described in verse two, and it said goodly apparel. This is a person that got some high status. They 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 they, they dress flashy. They dress showy. But it says, and you have respect unto him. Read. Read on. You want me to read it from the top? Yeah, read it from the top. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. So you, for the person that's dressed good, look good, you treat him with more respect than you treat somebody that, that's not dressing good and look good. That's a bad judgment. That's respect of person. You judging somebody based on their outward appearance, what they got on, how they dress, how much money they got. That's a bad. That's bad judgment. Because your riches, your attire, that got little to do with your spirit. Very little to do with do with your spirit. Just because you got money and you got everything going on, your spirit could be rotten and decayed. Because you not you don't uphold God's laws above everything else. You, you caught up in your riches and what you have. Read on. Verse 4. Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? It says, are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? You're evil if that's your thought process. If you think because somebody has a high status, they have, they got the good clothes, they, and somebody's poor, you, you judge that, you use that to judge their spirit. You're, you're, you're off. That's a respect of person. That's what a respect of person. Get uh, Sirach 19 and 4. Sirach chapter 19 and verse 4. Because we have to, you, you, like the, that saying, it says, don't judge a book by its cover. Just because it's on the outside, it's glittery, shining, everything look good. On the inside, that ain't what, that ain't what it is. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19 and verse 4. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. That's what it, it says. He that is hasty to get, give credit is light-minded. If you're light-minded, you're simple. You're foolish. Having to respect a person based on somebody just looking good or, or showing, that's a respect. That's a respect a person is showing that you, you're foolish. You're light-minded. You're simple. You're simple-minded. You have no understanding. It says, he that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. Read. And he that sinneth shall offend against his own soul. To let you know that that's sin. That's a respect of person spirit. You, you, you cannot be hasty to give anybody credit. So have, to have a respect of person spirit, meaning you judge somebody based off their status or, or, what they, or what, how much they have, how much they got in the bank, how they look, versus how they, how they spirit is, their actions. Judge them based on a, 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 a period of time of them showing forth that they got a good spirit, bearing good fruit. Uh, actually, what is that? Uh, Christ said that. Uh, Matthew 7 and 17. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 17. Every soul, every, even, excuse me, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So you will know the person by their works, by the fruits that they bear. But that's, that's not going to come, somebody come in one day, one time. That's going to come over the course of time of you being around them, seeing them, observing their spirit, observing what they do. And then you can make a judgment. Read. Verse 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, 
Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So a good tree will not bring forth evil fruit. Not saying that mistakes ain't going to happen. They may say something that offend one here or there. But overall, their, their overall character and their spirit, they're going to bear good fruit. If Even if they do do wrong, they're going to be quick to repent. Okay, read 17 and 18 together. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So a corrupt tree is going to bring forth evil fruit. And the reason that it, the reason we read in Sirach 19 and 4 it says don't be hasty to give credit because somebody can come around and be around and they can appear to be bearing good fruit. They can appear to have a good spirit, but you can only fake so long. If somebody evil, that evil is going to manifest. Sometime or one time or another, that evil is going to manifest. And if you have been around for any length of time, you, you, you've seen that. Read. Verse 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So a, a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. A corrupt tree can fake the funk for a, a dispensation of time, but after that dispensation of time, the spirit going to reveal itself. The evil is going to come out. Same thing with a, a good tree. If, if somebody can come in and they could just ha had a, a bad um, a bad world experience where they just got a bunch of spirits they got to fight off of them. But they, they endure and they fight and they fight and, at the, and over a dispensation of time they change and they start bearing forth that good fruit because they a good tree. They just been polluted by the world. They, they had a, a rougher time so to say. But overall they, they sincere. That's what it is. They sincere and they going to they gonna get right and over time you're going to see the, the good fruits of their labor. And that's why you can't judge a person based off of their status, how they look. You can't judge, or they they your they, they your best friend. You can't you can't judge based off that. That is that's a respect the person's spirit, and that's not how we are supposed to roll being in the truth. That's what a respect the person's spirit is. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.